plein air painting, materials, and the six minute setup. So I'm gonna be setting up in front of you uh, a type of easel that I work with. It's my favorite easel. It's called the Gloucester easel. Um, and I just wanna show you how if you're prepared, you can have a simple and very uh, successful setup and uh, can take you just a matter of moments to, from the impulse of painting to the act of painting. So um, as you see right here, I am working with a system that was uh, expertly designed. I believe it goes all the way back to, uh, if I'm correct, it's Norway in the 1920s. They came up with this. And between my easel and the box that I work with, I have everything really well organized. Uh, a friend of mine who's Marine says his motto is uh, always be prepared. And uh, he always is prepared. And uh, I like the same thing when I paint. So um, when I organize my box, I just want to make sure that I have absolutely everything in there from A to Z. So this is my little palette that I pop out of the box. More on that in a little bit. Um, on the left side, I have some paper towels, gloves, plastic bags, and steel wool. Um, I'll talk about a little, little bit more about the steel wool at a later point. In the center, I store all of my oil paints. I have my palette cups. I have small shampoo bottles filled with solvent and with medium. Um, I use these shampoo bottles so that I always have extra on me. And then on the right hand side, I have uh, my brushes and a, a bamboo holder. Um, kind of like that just because it condenses nicely, organizes everything. I have a mall stick to lean my hand on. I have extra little clamps, clips, and I have some palette knives. And so what I do is I snap my palette right onto the easel right there. Um, I always like to have everything secure. You never know when a windy gust is going to take something over, or you never know if you're going to accidentally brush up against it. Um, this mall stick that I came up with, it's uh, just a 36 inch, it's a carbon fiber tent pole, functions at the, uh, as the mall stick that I lean my hand on while I paint. And, uh, for the paper towel, I, I don't like things flying around and flailing about while I'm painting. So for the paper towel, I just slip it a bungee right on the inside of it and I clamp it onto either side of the easel and that works really well for me. So the paper towels don't go flying or unrolling while I'm working. Next thing I do is a garbage bag. So I will clamp on the garbage bag right on the side just like so. And I snap on my palette cups. Again, I usually will replenish them on site. And I always just make sure my little shampoo bottles are filled with medium and solvent. When I take paint out, what I oftentimes do is I put these gloves on just because sometimes the tubes have a little bit of paint on the side and it's my way of keeping my hands clean. So I work with titanium white, Roman ochre, Naples yellow, cadmium yellow light, cadmium yellow medium, cadmium orange, and cadmium red. And then as far as moving over to the uh, blues, king's blue, cerulean blue, cobalt blue, ultramarine blue deep. This color palette is not invented by myself. It was passed along from a number of very talented um, artist friends of mine who uh, are primarily pl plein air painters. Um, so I'm very grateful for their advice. I don't work with any student grade paint, any lakes, no permanents and no hues. The simple reason is that the lower quality of the paint, such as these paints, uh, the more frustrating the process and the poorer the result. As an example, student grade oil paint, um, it has a lower pigment to oil ratio. That means there's less pigment. That means you need to mix much more paint to get the color you're really not saving any money. Although you might feel like it at the cash register, trust me, it'll take half a tube of yellow paint to do with student grade paint what can be done with a drop of professional grade paint. Um, professional paint has a much higher ratio of pigment to oil. So a tiny little drop of yellow is gonna shock the whole thing very quickly. Less is needed to mix. Um, so it really is cost efficient to buy higher quality paints and your paintings really are going to look better. So when it comes to medium, 
the medium of choice for me is the Mayern medium. Um, I really like it, but um, I like to say that, you know, mediums like pianos, like violins, uh, they're highly individual. And uh, there are different types for different purposes, different purposes for different artists. Some piano players like a bright, jazzy piano. Some classical pet players like a more muted, warm piano. So just a different, different thing. I, uh, I work with turpentine. I like turpentine best, but some odorless uh, mineral spirits are pretty good. Uh, terps are a bit stronger, and they cut the paint better. Terps are less oily, but terps do have a strong smell. But if you're painting outdoors, oftentimes that is not an issue. So there you have it, the six minute plein air setup. Um, trust me, I've had plein air setups that take uh, 60 minutes. You don't want that. This is the product of many, many years of me uh, perfecting my personal setup. Um, tried a lot of different things, had a lot of bad results. Uh, this is definitely my very favorite. And uh, I think just the most important thing is that you have something that's sturdy, that has wide splayed legs. And if needs be, that you can weigh down so that uh, it doesn't blow over in the wind, doesn't get knocked over easily, and also it can take some uh, nice jabs of the paintbrush. I have a funny story about uh, bulky painting equipment and uh, traveling with painting. So I used to live in Florence, and there were just thousands, tens of thousands of people milling about the streets. And I used to do paintings in the alleyways. I'd find a lonely alleyway somewhere, and I'd be happy for two or three hours, but then it was time to make it from the painting spot back to my apartment, which was uh, next to Piazza Signoria, the uh, most crowded square in Florence. And uh, I'd have to weave through the crowds, but I looked like some crazy bag lady with a shopping cart, practically. Uh, I didn't literally have a shopping cart, but I had all this bulky equipment, and I would just be smashing into throngs of tourists everywhere. Uh, that's when I learned that I needed to travel light and lean. And so uh, what you're looking at with my setup is the product of many years of slimming down the operation so that I just had only what I needed and what was lightest. You can imagine the look on tourist faces when I squeezed by them and there was a blue Florentine oil painted sky that was impressed upon their beautiful white sundresses, Armani bags, and stuff of the sort. So don't ever do that. The easel pictured, which I highly recommend, is the Gloucester easel. It's from uh, TakeItEasel.com, and uh, you can tell them that Kevin sent you. And uh, the pallet box is made by Bob Rummel. Uh, really great woodworking, uh, dovetailed corners. Uh, highly recommend it. It's definitely heirloom quality. And again, tell them that Kevin McAvoy sent you. Thanks so much.